In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Notebook LM to help you create the perfect set of frequently asked questions. Now, the reasons that you want to do this are many. Number one, these are questions that people are actively looking for. So if you can provide the answers on your site, you're going to build up trust and also you're going to build up authority as well. FAQs help with SEO, which can drive traffic. If you want to, you can include affiliate links in your frequently asked questions. There are so many benefits of having them. But how can we actually create these on Notebook LM? Well, let's go and do it. So in order to craft the perfect set of frequently asked questions, obviously you'd need to have your niche and you want to go and do a basic Google search. So we're going to put personal finance FAQs for beginners and we're going to pretend that we are in the personal finance niche. There are lots of people that want to get into this niche, but they need simple answers to their questions without being overwhelmed by technical jargon and talk. So we're going to hit enter and we're going to get some information. We're going to scroll down past these videos and we've got our first one here. So what we can do is we can click on this and I put in a new tab, get this one in a new tab and just get a few of these in a new tab. The next step is to grab one of the URLs. So let's go to this one. We'll grab the URL. We'll head on over to Notebook LM. We'll create a new notebook. We'll choose website and we'll paste this in and hit insert. Hopefully this will pull it in. Let's wait for a second. Yes, that one's fine. We'll then go to another one and we'll grab this link here. We'll go back and we'll add a new source website. We'll paste this one in as well and we'll see if this one gets pulled in. And it's just a case of repeating this process for as many websites as you want. But I will briefly pause this video and be back in a few secs when I've added some more sources. So you can see I've added a bunch of sources over here. And now what I'm going to do is come down here and ask this question. What are common personal finance questions beginners ask? Because I want to focus on beginners. We're not focusing on intermediate level people or advanced people. And we're going to see if we can get a list of common questions. So we just have to wait for a few seconds. Well, Notebook LM thinks. Hopefully it won't take too long. There we go. So look, we've got all of, oops, bring that out of the way. We've got all of these questions here. What is a budget and how do I make one? Should I have an emergency fund? How can I save more money? How much should I save each month for retirement? How do I save for my children's education? Should I pay down my debts or save for retirement? So we've got a bunch of these questions here that we could potentially incorporate into our FAQ section. What else could we ask? Well, before that, I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up and maybe even consider subscribing. So another question that we could ask in this situation, what are typical challenges beginners face with budgeting? So again, we just go through the same process to get a ton of these different questions that we can use. Because at the end of the day, we want to have the most comprehensive set of questions so that people that come to our site, whether it's a blog, a product, whatever it might be, we can provide the best information and the most detailed information. So here, budgeting challenges for beginners. These are the common challenges that beginners offer encounter. So again, we could turn these into questions. For example, how do I resist the temptation to overspend? Now to give us a little bit more clarity because you've got a lot of information to go through, we can ask another question. Look at all of these sources and list questions based on these three subtopics, budgeting, saving money and managing debt. So now we can get Notebook LM to help us begin to organise our FAQs because otherwise we're going to have a ton of information and we're going to have to sift through it all and we don't want to have questions together that are on slightly different topics. So we'll just wait for a second and we'll see what FAQs that notebook gives us within budgeting, saving money and managing debt. And if it takes too long, I'll pause the video. But there you go. We've got these here. So let's come right the way up here. Whoop, I need to stop hovering over that. OK, so we've got budgeting. How can someone with an irregular income create, effectively create and maintain a budget? What are some practical strategies for tracking daily expenses and ensuring they align with the allocated budget? So again, we've got all of these questions which are a little bit more detailed now. So we've got that, but it still looks a little bit complicated to me. I want to make this much easier and simpler for a beginner. Before we do that, we'll actually ask it this. We'll ask it to list any common questions that may have been missed by all of these you know, websites and resources that we've shared. So we want to find if anything else that we can potentially add. And once we've got that, we then need to make sure that we've got things 
that we can you know put on our site that are succinct and help the beginner so again we've got various other questions here so these are additional questions on personal finance and again it's organized it into budgeting saving money and managing debt so we've got a load of information here now it's time to make it easier to read and to do that we're going to add this i want to create faq that encompass all of the common questions of the sources plus those that were missed write clear succinct questions and beginner friendly answers do not miss anything out and I'll put a little comma in there and we'll see what it gets now of course it might miss something ai is never perfect you want to fact check all of the information that is provided. If this were to be something that you were gonna actually do, I would assume that you would be a subject matter expert or be knowledgeable at the very least on this topic. So you would be able to verify whether the answers are accurate. And of course, you can add your own unique taste or even just write your own answers from scratch if you want to. But you can then incorporate these all on your website and have the best go-to guide for this particular niche. So let's kind of come down here and let's see what we've got. We've got a ton of cool information in here. Let's have a look. Okay, FAQ on personal finance for beginners. What is personal finance? And we've got all of this stuff. So what we can do if we want to use this as is and we want to be careful, we can copy this and then we can open up Grammarly. So let's go and open up Grammarly. I'm going to open up Grammarly. Obviously, I have a paid account, just to let you know. And once this opens up, I'm going to click on New. And we are going to paste all this in, just paste everything. We'll leave that as done. And I want to come down here, and I want to check for plagiarism and AI text. Now, of course, this is AI text. And I don't care if it comes back as 100% AI or not. But I, I am worried about plagiarism. So there, are, there might be certain things that we would need to rewrite and edit ourselves because we don't want to plagiarize other people's stuff. So it's checking for plagiarism and AI. It may take a little bit longer. And we can also take this and improve the readability as well. I like the fact that it has linked out to other sources as well because we do want to you know give credit where credit is due. But if you... It's completely up to if you don't want to. So we've got 8% of the document appears to be AI generated, which is good because it's actually 100%. 14% uh, of your document matches the external sources. So again, you want to go through and you want to be careful. So let's click on this. Okay, so this is directly taken from this. So this could be a section that you would want to potentially rewrite or edit. Now, what I would also do, I can copy this whole text and I can go over to the Hemingway editor to improve its readability, to make sure that it does really make sense for beginners. So let's go and do that. So here I am over at the Hemingway editor. They do have a free version, but I much prefer the paid version. So I'm on that for transparency. You can see here plus plan up here. So what I'll do is I'll paste everything in and it's already got a grade nine readability level, which is really, really good. If you want to make it easier to understand, let's just scroll to the stop. You can see that certain sentences which are deemed harder to read are highlighted in different colors. So the, hard, the very hard to read sentences are red. So what I could do is just click somewhere on this red bit simplify for me and it's going to rewrite it and it's going to take it from postgraduate level in this case it's gone down to grade 12. If you like this you don't have to accept it you want to make sure that it's right but if you like this you click use suggestion and if you want to do this for the yellow ones as well the yellow ones are hard to read but sometimes that's fine. So again you want to go down and you just want to check the bits that you want to have rewritten and you can go through and do that. The spe spelling or grammar issues can be related to American and British English. I'm from the UK originally, so I use British English, but often the content that AI generates is in American English. So just be careful that you've got you know congruency throughout your article. With weakness, these are things like the passive voice. So if we click on view details, we've got you know four uses of the passive voice. Um, we've got adverbs that could potentially be you know, simplified. It's really entirely up to you how much you want to go through and simplify this stuff. And the stuff that's underlined, this is actually Grammarly as well. So if I click on see more in Grammarly, it brings up all of these suggestions. The ones that are highlighted, there are things that are highlighted in blue, there are things that are highlighted in red. Red is more for accuracy. So again, it says that I shouldn't have the comma. So if I don't want the comma, I can click on that, the comma's gone. This is more on synonyms. Is it really necessary to change the word important to essential? I don't think so, but if you want to, you can. 
So it's entirely up to you what you change, but that's how you can improve the readability and ensure grammatical accuracy. I would always advocate that you write a lot of these answers yourself, or at least reword the answers, but you've still been provided with all of the important questions, which is the main thing. Once you're happy, you just go and add this to the relevant part of your website and you'll be good to go. Now, if you're an affiliate marketer, you can do this for affiliate products and you can give a really comprehensive overview so that people that come to your site can get all of their questions answered and don't have to go to somebody else's review to find the answers out. Because if they do that, they're more likely to buy through that other person. Speaking of which, if you have questions, please leave them below in the comment section. I reply to every single comment myself. Thanks for watching. Again, please consider subscribing if you've not done so already and I'll see you in another video soon. Take care.